describe reality. Okay, so one, one, two, three, five, that's the beginning of the Fibonacci sequence. Next number in the sequence, what do you think? How about eight? The number after that, 13. The number after that, 21. So if you're getting those right along with me, then you've recognized the pattern that I wrote with the first few numbers in the Fibonacci sequence, which is this. It starts with a one, the next number is a one, then after that, to get the next number, you'll always add the two numbers that came before that. So one and one is two, one and two is three, two and three is five, three and five is eight, so on and so forth. So that's, the, that's recognizing the pattern that exists in the Fibonacci sequence. So it turns out that this sequence of numbers has all kinds of applications. It describes all kinds of things in the world that we see around us. There's a conspiracy to hide this information that DNA is a Fibonacci, is an exemplification of this uh, number called, or entity uh, ratio sequence called the uh, golden ratio. The ratio that proves the existence of intelligent design, or the uh, reality of intelligent design of the cosmos. I mean, if you go to the golden ratio site for Wikipedia 2 on the same theme, um, <laughs> They don't mention any of this stuff in nature that we're going to talk about here, that we talked about on the show two days ago, and that we're talking about here. They talk about how it's found in architecture and math and all this kind of stuff. They don't discuss it, how it's found in the measurements of the human arm. Why not? It's just, it's, it, I mean, well, I think I'm making, that's the point here. I think that just made sense to me, thinking this through as I say it to you. It has to be a conspiracy. How could all this be overlooked, and how could Wikipedia leave it out? It's, it can't be, it has to be somehow that big money has pushed their influence uh, somehow and they've had a drive to keep this covered up or something. It, these can't all be coincidences. And since they're doing that with everything else, it has to be the case that uh, there's some movement to keep this stifled. I mean, why isn't, and here's another piece to add to this. Why isn't it, this in our education system? We learn all this junk geometry pea brain stuff when you take geometry in high school and they don't teach you about any of this the golden ratio everywhere in nature I, I went through elementary school you know high school college uh, you know, undergrad degree in college uh, master's degree and halfway through PhD and never was this, any of this mentioned it, and we know who controls the universities uh, the big money behind it, all the way up to the Illuminati Nephilim uh, controllers. So this can't be, this is planned, okay? And you just wonder, it's got to, I mean, I'm almost concluding here in my mind this Davidson College site showing up number one in Google all the time on the first page, and Wikipedia having these strange measurements which don't correlate with all kinds of these examples from academic sites I'm finding, and I'm putting them all, pictures of the uh, screenshots in the newsletter. Um, it's got to be a conspiracy. I mean, we could keep going compiling the evidence. It would just all lead to it. So, and that, and if we could keep compiling evidence of it being a conspiracy, I mean, everything points towards it. I'm just throwing ideas off the top of my head. These strange sites show up at the top. Wikipedia is wrong. It's covered up completely in, in the best-selling books about the golden ratio, which come from uh, wealthy university professors. It's uh, the universities and the education, government-controlled education system, absolutely covers it up. You see how I mean everything's falling in the same direction. You know, the, so when everything, uh, all these conclusions point to the same direction that it's covered up and hidden.
I mean, this is pretty powerful stuff that we're going over. I mean, there's no anthropologist or biologist on the planet who can explain this one. How, how the sunflower evolved a bunch of spirals in it. It's, a, it's seed pod design. And how those spirals exactly lead to a golden ratio Fibonacci series numbers. Unbelievable. Okay, this is it. There's no question. I mean, we've all been lied to all through our undergraduate college degrees and our elementary schools and on our TVs just by them not discussing all this. I mean, you know how many examples I have here? There's so many, and they're all this powerful. Okay? And all this was hidden from us while we were in our schools learning about... What were we learning about? Um, plate tectonics theory. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty sad. Pretty sad case. And when it's so obviously everywhere in nature, it has to be a conspiracy in the uh, satanic New World Order Illuminati system we live in. They don't want, I guess they don't want you to know this stuff. Because you might realize that this reality you live in is charged with the, with the, uh, with, with Yahweh. The architect's fingerprint is absolutely everywhere, and it's in you. You, you are a piece of that fingerprint and hey you might realize that your consciousness is also and that there's no joke in saying you're created in God's image and you can therefore take part in the power and creation of the intelligent designer The placebo effect is the extraordinary phenomena of people getting better even when they've only had a dummy treatment or a sham treatment. So that can mean uh, a sugar pill, but it can also mean sham ultrasound where somebody just holds the machine up to your body but doesn't really switch it on. Or even a, a fake uh, operation where somebody makes the incision and then pretends to do the operation but doesn't actually do anything. And the fascinating and amazing thing is it turns out that when people get these fake sham treatments, they often get better. What's interesting about the placebo effect is it shows the amazing power of the mind over the body. When it comes to the origin of life, there are only two possibilities, creation or spontaneous generation. There is no third way. Spontaneous generation was disproved 100 years ago, but that leads us to only one other conclusion, that of supernatural creation. We cannot accept that on philosophical grounds, therefore we choose to believe the impossible that life, life arose spontaneously by chance." End quote. See what he's, what he's saying there is that science has to be conducted in a naturalistic vacuum. On philosophical grounds, we can't follow the evidence wherever it leads if it leads us outside the natural realm to a metaphysical realm, to a supernatural realm. We have to stay within this naturalistic, materialistic box. This in 1954, and the idea here is that science will ultimately answer all of these questions, but the last thing that we want to do is jump into some kind of philosophical or theological explanation. It's interesting that 30 years later, in 1984, the late George Wald again gave us another quote. This was called Life and Mind in the Universe, and he actually was speaking at the Quantum Biology Symposium. And here's what he said 30 years after the quote I just read you. It has occurred to me lately, I must confess, with some shock at first to my scientific sensibilities, that both questions, meaning the origin of consciousness in humans and of life from non-living matter, might be brought into some degree of congruence. This is with the assumption that mind, rather than emerging as a late outgrowth in the evolution of life, has existed always as the matrix, the source and condition of physical reality. The stuff of which physical reality is composed is mind stuff. It is mind that has composed a physical universe that breeds life and so eventually evolves creatures that know and create science, art, and technology-making animals. In them, the universe begins to know itself. This again was 1984 by the late George Wald, an agnostic and materialist naturalist. But do you see where he's going there? He brings in a notion of mind. He says, as I studied these 30, these 30 years, these three decades since his previous statement, 
How does matter become mind? It doesn't. Mind must bring forth matter. You see, matter has never brought forth consciousness or rationality or mind. Information. See, now we know what the, the simple cell, so-called, or DNA, that this is information code. Information theory would say that this type of code, this type of ordered sequence, this type of information can only be a product of mind, of intelligence. There is no other alternative. So what is George Wald saying here, even though it shocks his scientific sensibilities? It's that in all areas of study, mind must bring forth information, matter, etc. Matter never brings forth mind. Think about that. The evidence to me that just cries out that there's a God is the study of DNA. DNA is a very powerful, massive information storage system. In fact, DNA that makes up our genes actually is like books of information that's read by a language system. It's absolutely phenomenal. And scientists know today that language as a code only come from an intelligence, and information only comes from information. Nobody's ever seen matter by itself give rise to a code. Nobody's ever seen matter by itself give rise to information. And as you look at DNA, it actually cries out in the beginning, God created the universe. We all begin as a single cell the size of a period at the end of a sentence. How does that cell know how to build a, a body with 100 trillion uh, cells in it, thousands of different kinds, and each one of them is so complex, nanochemical machinery beyond our comprehension how it works, and encoded is the instruction manual. It's the manufacturer's manual how to build and operate every part of this incredible body made up of 100 trillion cells. Furthermore, DNA is a three-dimensional molecule that is self-replicating. Each molecule is able to make an identical copy quickly and efficiently. The Lord has even programmed DNA to detect and correct replication errors. These sophisticated capabilities far exceed man's means. God has created the DNA molecule in such a way that it is self-correcting. There are special proteins called enzymes that go up and down the DNA molecule looking for and making repairs on a minute-by-minute, second-by-second basis. God created us with a DNA code that actually has what we call editase or editorial type enzymes. Just as an editor reads a newspaper or a book looking for mistakes, so God has created special enzymes enzymes that go up and down our DNA molecule repairing the mistakes in ways that are unbelievably complex. Our DNA has information in it and there is a whole field of scientific study called information science which studies how information originates, how it's transmitted and so on. And one of the laws of information science says that information never originates by itself in matter, never spontaneously comes about. Anytime we trace uh, the copying of information back to its source, it always, it always comes back to a mind. And since we have creative information in DNA, that tells me that DNA comes from intelligence. It's not something that could possibly come about through millions of years of mutations and natural selection. Nobody knows. Go ask your, go to the university and go ask your physicists, go ask your chemists, go ask them and say this, say, how do these crazy things called quantum particles, which act so strangely, compose the next stage up the chain? How, how do they compose an atom? And then ask, how does an atom compose a molecule? And how does a molecule compose a chemical? And they're going to say, we don't have any idea. Now, they'll probably get out their, their, you know, tinker toys and draw you or sculpt you a picture of an atom and say, this is how the atom is structured and it gives rise to the molecule and some molecule in question. And you say, no, 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 professor, how does one compose the other? I didn't ask you to show me a representation that, that you think is true about the one and then just, you know, about the atom and then just say, oh, it composes the, the, uh, the next stage up, the, the molecule. I want you to say, Professor, I want you to show me how it works. Tell me what is involved. Get, guide me through the process. And that professor is going to say, 
we don't know how it works. We can't. So the point is here. I remember we studied this a lot when I was a graduate student in physics or philosophy. We talked about this a lot. The there is no known uh, relationship between quantum particles and then uh, the things that they allegedly compose, whether it's a mole molecules or chemicals or worlds or rocks or whatever. Now, there's a whole lot of people who are going to tell you that that's what happens, that the quantum particles compose physical reality. Now, um, <laughs> I'm not so sure. This is the level of knowledge, okay, not of uh, wishful thinking. The level of knowledge is when we have empirical data and philosophical reasoning that is that sophisticated, that powerful, that ironclad, that, that simple, that uh, we can say, okay, it can't be any other way. This, so we have to say, this is an absolute truth. This has to be a truth of things, and we, this can't be an illusion. So we know something. I mean, what what's more enjoyable than that? Well, I can think of a couple things that are more enjoyable, but that's that's pretty uh, for someone like me who's just obsessed with knowing how things are and and knowing about myself and just knowing the the way reality works. And I know a lot of the listeners of this show are the same way. Being able to exist at that level, that empirical and philosophical level, is really important to me, and it feels really really good. Okay, some people don't care about stuff like this, and that's fine. Just let them go, and they care about other things. You know, maybe they care about art, or maybe they care about television, or maybe they like Barack Obama and, and war, and maybe they like to be brainwashed, or, or who knows what. But for me, I like to. I want to know how reality works, and it makes me feel. Every time I get a little bit further along, it's like I've I've um, energized my soul or something. The deepest parts of me have grown, and they feel more spiritualized. Okay, so so it's very very healthy to do this.